reading through the Bible in one year, May 26th, Numbers 35, Psalm 79, Isaiah 27, and 1 John chapter 5. Ta-da! Took a second for, for the screen to show up. Let's get cracking. Um, the Lord again spoke to Moses in the plains of Moab by the Jordan across from Jericho. Command the Israelites to give the cities of the, out of their hereditary property for Levites to live in and pasture land around the cities. The cities will be for them to live in, and their pasture lands will be for their uh, herds, flocks, and for the other animals, or all their other animals. The pasture lands of the cities you are to give to the Levites uh, will extend from the, city, uh, from the city wall 500 yards on each side. Measure a thousand yards outside the city for the east side, a thousand yards for the south, a thousand yards for the west, and a thousand yards for the north, uh, with the city in the center. This will belong to them as pasture lands for their cities. The cities that you give the Levites will include six cities of refuge, which you will provide so that the one who kills someone may flee there. In addition to these, give 42 other cities. The total number of cities you will give the Levites will be 48 along with their pasture lands. Of the cities that you give from the Israelites' territory, you shall, make, uh, you shall take more from a larger tribe and less from a smaller one. Each tribe is to give some of its cities to the Levites in proportion to the inheritance it receives. The Lord spoke to Moses, Speak to the Israelites and tell them, When you cross the land into the uh, when you cross the Jordan into the land of Canaan, designate cities to serve as cities of refuge for you, so that a person who kills someone unintentionally may flee there. You will have the cities as a refuge from the avenger, so that the one who kills someone will not die until he stands trial before the assembly. The cities you select will be your six cities of refuge. Selects three cities across the Jordan and three cities in the land of Canaan to be cities of refuge. These six cities will serve as a refuge for the uh, Israelites and for the alien or temporary resident among them, so that anyone who kills a person unintentionally may flee there. If anyone strikes a person with an iron object and death results, well, he's a murderer, and the murderer must be put to death. If anyone has in his hand a stone capable of causing death and strikes another person so that he dies, well, the murderer must be put to death. And if anyone has in his hand a wooden object capable of causing death and strikes another person and he dies, well, that murderer must be put to death. The avenger of blood is to himself kill the murderer. When he finds him, he is to kill him. Likewise, if anyone in hatred pushes a person or throws an object at him with malicious intent and he dies, or if host in hostility he strikes him with his hand and he dies, the one who struck him must be put to death. He is a murderer. The avenger of blood is to kill the murderer when he finds him. But if anyone suddenly pushes a person without hostility or throws any object at him without malicious intent or without looking drops a stone that could kill a person and he dies, but he was not his enemy and didn't intend to harm him, the assembly is to judge between the person who kills someone and the avenger of blood according to these ordinances. The assembly is to protect the one who kills someone from the avenger of blood. Then, the assembly will return to him, uh, rather, will return him to the city of refuge he fled to, and he must live there until the death of the high priest who was anointed with the holy oil. If the one who kills someone ever goes outside the border of the city of refuge he fled to, again, that's that thousand yards all the way around, and the avenger of blood finds him outside the border of his city, uh, of his city of refuge and kills him, well, the avenger will not be guilty of bloodshed. For the one who killed a person was supposed to live in his city of refuge until the death of the high priest. Only after the death of the high priest uh, may the one who has killed a person return to the land he possesses. These instructions will be a statutory ordinance for you throughout your generations wherever you live. If anyone kills a person, the murderer is to be put to death based on the word of witnesses. 
but no one is to be put to death based on the testimony of one witness. You are not to accept a ransom for the life of someone who is guilty of murder. He must be put to death. Neither should you accept a ransom for the person who flees to his city of refuge, allowing him to return and live in the land before the death of the high priest. Do not defile the land where you live, for bloodshed defiles uh, the land. And there can be no atonement for the land because of the blood that is shed on it, except by the blood of the person who shed it. Do not make the land unclean where you live and where I dwell. For I, the Lord, reside among the Israelites. Now let's move on to Psalm 79. (gasps) Sorry. It's just been one of these days. All right. Verse 1. God. The nations have invaded your inheritance. Your inherit words are hard. Your inheritance <laughs> desecrated your holy temple and turned Jerusalem into ruins. They gave the corpses of your servants to the birds of the sky for food, the flesh of your faithful ones to the beasts of the earth. They poured out their blood like water all around Jerusalem, and there was no one to bury them. We have become an object of reproach to our neighbors, a source of mockery and and ridicule to those around us. How long, Lord, will you be angry forever? Will your jealousy keep burning like fire? Pour out your wrath on the nations that don't acknowledge you, on the kingdoms that don't call on your name. For they have devoured Jacob and devastated his homeland. Do not hold past iniquities against us and let your compassion come to us quickly. For we have become very weak. God of our salvation, save us. Help us. For the glory of your name, rescue us and atone for our sins, for your name's sake. Why should the nations ask, where is their God? Before our eyes, let vengeance for the shed blood of your servants be known among the nations. Let the groans of the prisoners reach you. According to your great power, uh, preserve those condemned to die. Pay back sevenfold to our neighbors uh, the reproach that they have hurled at you, Lord. Then we, your people, the sheep of your pasture, will thank you forever. We will declare your praise to generation after generation. Now Isaiah 27. On that day, Yahweh, with his relentless, large, strong sword, will bring judgment on Leviathan, the fleeing serpent, Leviathan, the twisting serpent. He will slay the monster that is in the sea. On that day, sing about a desirable vineyard. I am the Lord who watches over it, to water it regularly, so that no one disturbs it. I watch over it night and day. I am not angry. If only there were thorns and briars for me to battle, then I would trample them and burn them to the ground. Or let it take hold of my strength. Uh, Let it make peace with me. Make peace with me. In the days to come, Jacob will take root, and Israel will blossom and bloom and fill the whole world with fruit. Did the Lord strike Israel as he struck the one who struck Israel? Was Israel killed like those killed by the Lord? You disputed with Israel by banishing and driving her away. He removed her with his severe storm on the day of the east wind. Therefore, Jacob's iniquity will be atoned for in this way. And the result of the removal of his sin will be this. When he makes all the the altar stones like crushed bits of chalk, no Asherah poles or incense altars will remain standing. For the fortified city will be desolate, pastures deserted and abandoned like a wilderness. Calves will graze there, and there they will spread out and strip its branches. When its branches dry out, they will be broken off. Women will come and make fires with them, for they are not a, a, a people with understanding. Their, 
Therefore, their maker will not have compassion on them, and their creator will not be gracious to them. On that day, the Lord will thresh the grain from the Euphrates River as far as the uh, wadi of Egypt, and you, Israelites, will be gathered one by one. On that day, a great ram's horn will be blown, and those lost in the land of Assyria will come, as well as those dispersed in the land of Egypt, and they will worship the Lord at Jerusalem on the holy mountain. Now, 1 John chapter 5. John continues. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God. And everyone who loves the Father also loves the one, the one, the one born of him. This is how we know that we love God's children, when we love God and obey his commands. For this is what love for God is, to keep his commands. And his commands are not a burden, because every one... Uh, Starting over, because everyone who has been born of God conquers the world. This is the victory that has been con that has conquered the world, our faith. Who is the one who conquers the world, but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God, Jesus Christ? He is the one who came by water and blood, not by water only, as in the water of birth, but by water and by blood. And the Spirit is the one who testifies, because the Spirit is the truth. There are three that testify, the Spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three are in agreement. If we accept human testimony, God's testimony is greater, because it is God's testimony that he has given about his Son. The one who believes in the Son of God has this testimony within himself. The one who does not believe God has made him a liar, because he has not believed in the testimony God has given about his Son. And this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. The one who has the Son has life, and the one who does not have the Son of God does not have life. I have written these things to you, um, who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. This is the confidence we have before him. If we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears whatever we ask, we know that we have uh, what we have. Let me start over with that. We know that we have what we have asked of him. If anyone sees a fellow believer committing a sin that doesn't lead to death, he should ask, and God will give life to him. To those who commit sin that doesn't lead to death. There is a sin that leads to death, and I'm not saying that he should pray about that. All unrighteousness is sin, and there is sin that doesn't lead to death. We know that everyone who has been born of God does not sin. But uh, this and again, we've talked about this before. It's not that you don't commit sin now as a Christian. You will commit sin until you pass through that veil of death. Um, he's not preaching Wesleyan, uh, or what was called uh, by the Methodist Wesleyan, um, sinless perfectionism. That says that you could reach this, this level of perfection. Based on this text, you can reach a level of perfection where you just don't sin anymore in thought, word, or deed. This is impossible, this side of the veil of death. The only time you get to a point where you don't sin anymore is after you die. You're stripped of this flesh that you have here on earth that longs for sin and longs for self-gratification. And you're given a new body that has no desire or capability for sinning. So everyone here on earth even the, the, the most pious person you could possibly think of still sins every single day. That's just what happens. Sometimes the, the sins you were committing before get fewer and further between, but you, you still struggle with sin for the rest of your life. So the point being made here is uh, when he says, we know that everyone who has uh, been born of God does not sin, means does not 
live in their sins, doesn't embody their sin, doesn't allow that sin that they're committing uh, to become the, 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 the banner of their life, where they tell everybody that I am known by the sins that I commit. Continuing on, but the one who is born of God keeps him, and the evil one does not touch him. We know that we are of God, and the whole world is under the sway of the evil one. And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding so that we may know the true one. We are in the true one, that is, in his Son, Jesus Christ. He is the true God and eternal life. Little children, guard yourselves from idols. All right, that is all for today. Um, God willing, we'll be back tomorrow. Behold the word of the Lord.